This is Whiskey Lore. Picture a young man riding along in the passenger seat of his father's favorite car, riding for hours and hours across the flat terrain of Ohio, watching farmlands of corn and wheat and silos by the hundreds passing by. On a family trip, these monotonous miles would have been tracked by the sounds of instrumental music coming from the radio, with the father driving, the mother knitting in the front seat, and sister dozing, while a boy was creating imaginary competitions with the other cars that were overtaking them while humming his favorite tunes to pass the time. Well, that was a normal family trip, but this time it was father and son. Without hesitation, the young man took advantage of his access to the front seat of the car to engage his father in a conversation, feeding his natural curiosity about things. And on this particular trip, there was an added excitement because the pair were heading back to the place that they had once lived. It was a place brimming with memories for both the father and son. For the father, it was the place of his birth, of his formative years, of his work life, and of his oh-so-familiar family life. He'd spent nearly 50 years watching the bustling nature of his old hometown and then watched with sadness as it slowly and steadily decayed. To the young man, even though he hadn't had the same time investment with the city, the place was thick with fond memories of those carefree years of childhood play, the best friends he left behind, the times he went to ball games with his dad, and the hours of sitting in his grandmother's high-rise apartment near the center of the city, listening to the adults talk, while he looked out the window, daydreaming about the freedom of exploring that greater world outside. The young man always felt a certain openness with his father when they went on road trips together. And on this particular trip, the instrumental music faded into the background, drowned out by the riveting conversation as the two rolled up through Tennessee and Kentucky. And the boy felt the freedom to ask his father question after question, engaging the wealth of historical information and those wondrous stories his father had locked away in his head. Then as they got in range, his father flipped the radio over to the AM dial and pulled in their old hometown radio station. And between the cracks and pops of radio interference came the familiar voice of the venerable morning talk show host, J.P. McCarthy. As the morning show came to a close, the next host came on, and he was interviewing an author who had written his own unique thesis on the John F. Kennedy assassination. When the segment was over, the young man asked his father about his recollections of the JFK assassination and asked him what he thought of the author's theories. And it was in this moment that the young man realized how much he loved history. While others his age might have been fidgeting over such a long car ride and wishing they were on their way to Disney World or Busch Gardens, this young man was soaking in his father's stories of presidents, conspiracies, and battles of long ago, and the unexplained mysteries of the past. Even this long drive to their old hometown would bring on wave after wave of wonderful stories and remembrances of the way things used to be, with his father always providing a personal touch that no tour guide could ever match. And what always amazed this young man was the wealth of historical information that flowed from his father just like water. Powerful stories just waiting to be explored, and all available just for the price of a road trip, a family vacation, or a visit upstairs to his father's den. Yet as this young man began to grow into his own skin, he found himself challenging his father's stories. And while still excited to hear them, the young man let his own political biases build the occasional wall between him and certain stories that no longer resonated. Yet he always came back. And whether his father knew it or not, just by sharing his own love and passion for travel and history, he'd instilled those same loves and passions in his son.
Well, if it wasn't apparent already, that young man in the car was me. I picked up a lot of interesting tendencies from my dad. One most definitely was a love for travel. But another was his love for research. And not only research, but getting to the heart of things. The harder to find truth hidden beneath the surface. Now as I got older, there'd be times that I would question my dad's biases on stories, but I never questioned his desire to find a firm answer where there wasn't one present before. In his later years, he mostly showed this through his dedication to our family tree, traveling to the old country to verify through church records information that others took for granted. And it's that dedication that inspires the path that I'm now taking with Whiskey Lore. While traveling to distilleries in Kentucky, Tennessee, Ireland, and Scotland, I loved hearing all the stories, histories, and loads of information about the process of making whiskey. I started to uncover truths that had always been a little unclear to me, like all bourbon doesn't have to come from Kentucky, or the difference between Irish and Scotch whiskeys. And I heard some great ghost stories and legends that fill the imagination and help to define the spirit and character of a distillery or its whiskey. But I think what surprised me the most was all the guessing and hunches that were being tossed around. They even contradicted each other from distillery tour to distillery tour. And it's this longing and desire to get these stories straight that lets me know I am my father's son. So in certain episodes, I'll explore these common misconceptions about whiskey and I'll see if I can find you the answers. But I also want to invoke that great love of telling stories that I inherited from my father. The stories, the mysteries, the lore. From the American Old West to the mystical Celtic regions of Ireland and Scotland, these places just burst at the seams with vivid tales. Like the tale of Kubakin, a ghostly specter that not only haunts a small highland village, but also graces the bottle of a Tomatin single malt whiskey. Or the incredible story of master blender Richard Patterson's chance encounter with a 100-year-old bottle of whiskey that was originally intended for consumption by one of his greatest heroes, Sir Ernest Shackleton. The tale of Four Roses, which went from one of America's greatest whiskeys to disappearing almost completely from the shelves, only to rise again from the ashes. And then there was a story that touched me in a way I never would have expected. During my research, I came across a story that I thought would be fascinating for an episode. In the last decade of the 19th century, Tommy Dewar had gone on a worldwide trip to promote Dewar's whiskey and set up distributorships across the globe. Now, this story would contain two of my favorite elements, travel and whiskey. And the best part was, he actually had written a personal journal about the trip and called it a ramble round the globe. Imagine a travel log written over a hundred years ago with stories, experiences, a completely different mode of transportation, and a very different looking world. Well, it took me all of about two minutes to get to a computer, hunting to see if there was a Google Reader version of the book or maybe a book I could purchase. Well, to my amazement, there was actually a different book called A Ramble Around the Globe Revisited, subtitled In the Footsteps of Tommy Dewar. It was written by Malcolm Greenwood. Well, I quickly read the synopsis and apparently in 1999, this modern day whiskey sales manager had decided to follow the same path Tommy Dewar took over a hundred years before. And he'd compare and contrast the 20th century experience to the 19th century experience. Well, it didn't take me long to hit that purchase button. And when the book arrived, I ran right through it. I enjoyed Malcolm's cynical look at his own travel style and his sometimes yearning for the slower pace and glorious hotels of the Gilded Age. But now I was on another hunt. I had a trip planned to return to Scotland, 
My goal was to set up interviews and dig deeper into the information for these podcasts. Well, I had to find out where Malcolm was and get his story. I mean, what a wealth of information he could provide. I knew there had to be so much more information than he could ever write in a book. My investigative mind wanted to have a chance to sit down and enjoy a dram with him while we talked over all of his adventures. But my hunt wasn't going so well at first. I couldn't find him on LinkedIn and he wasn't in any Google searches. But on the back sleeve of the book, it told me which distillery he worked for. I went to their website, filled out a contact form, and I waited. The next morning, I was happy to see that there was an email from the distillery. But the person answering it wasn't familiar with Mr. Greenwood. She said she'd ask around, so I thanked her, and again, I waited. The next morning, I was looking through my email when I saw the distillery's response pop up. Man, was I excited. I mean, I was finally going to get this interview. I, I felt like a real journalist for the first time in my life, chasing the story. And then it happened. At first, I, I didn't even really realize how loud my voice actually was. But I almost shouted out a painful, Oh no! I slumped back in my seat. Reading the note, it said that, Unfortunately, Mr. Greenwood had passed away a few years before, and because of the nature of things, they couldn't go any further with helping me. It wasn't until later that night when I got home that I had a chance to process not only the news, but my sudden and startling reaction to it. All I could think was, Malcolm Greenwood had left this world with a story to tell. And in an instant, all of those memories, all of that knowledge, all that humanity, was just gone. Only the memories of his family and friends and this one little book that was sitting on my desk. What's interesting, though, is that I realized that I'd had those thoughts before. On the day my father passed away, it was a very hard day. I decided to do some cathartic writing just to help me get through those painful moments. I consoled myself by remembering how my dad had lived a happy and healthy 82 years. He did it all on his own terms. Traveling, learning, and sharing his joy for what he knew. If we all could just be that lucky. But what of all his stories yet untold? I mean, sure, my dad had written some family histories and pages of other people's genealogies, but there was so much more that just disappeared in an instant. It's why when I walk through these historic buildings with their angel share smells and musty corners, listening to those wonderful stories and seemingly insignificant anecdotes, I feel compelled to capture those ideas, those stories and tall tales, and share them with you so that you can tell them to others and pass them on down. So I don't trap all these things I'm learning in this small lump of gray matter in my head and, and never let them lighten up somebody else's day. Look, I know whiskey legends and whiskey history may seem insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but what's life without sharing stories? I mean, sure, some of these stories may be for fun, but some of them, like the one that evolved out of my search for Tommy Dewar, can reveal a deeper story. Look, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this episode today, it's don't hesitate in sharing or setting down your own stories. And don't wait to get those great stories from your loved ones. I truly believe that stories are the things that make us who we are as human beings. I look forward to our journey together, and thanks for indulging me as I share with you a piece of who I am and the reasons that I feel driven to share these great whiskey stories. For allowing me to honor my father, he gave me the love of travel and history, and who without his influence, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be doing this today. 
I'm Drew Hanish, and this is Whiskey Lore. Whiskey Lore is a production of Travel Fuels Life, LLC. Production stories and research by Drew Hanish. If you enjoyed today's episode, help Whiskey Lore grow by telling a friend about the show. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. If you want to dig even deeper into the history of American whiskey, well, check out my book, The Lost History of Tennessee Whiskey. And for travel, seek out Whiskey Lore's travel guide to experiencing Irish whiskey and experiencing Kentucky bourbon. All three books are available on Amazon, most online bookstores, and through your local bookshop by request. To connect with me and other whiskey history fans, make sure to join us at whiskey-lore.com slash Patreon. Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Drew Hanish. Until next time, cheers and slán For show notes, resources, and transcripts for this episode, head to whiskey-lore.com slash 